Arizona Cardinals, best record in the National League, and the only team that hasn't blown a game yet. Woo! You know, now that you've mentioned it, you've totally jinxed us. Oh no. Our bullpen is unbeatable. Mitchell Boggs, he can't let us down. The 2 1 pitch. Bell to deep left field and way, way out of here. Diamondbacks take the lead 8 to 7. You were saying? Well, at least Todd Willemeyer wasn't pitching. We're going out tonight to get going. Cards take two out of three from the Arizona Diamondbacks, increasing their record to 10 and five. They become the first team in the National League to reach the 10 win mark. But more importantly, it is the first time in franchise history that they've won their first five series. You see, these vlogs do bring good luck. And there's a huge connection between the St. Louis pro sports scene and the Valley of the Suns. Well, there is that excuse of an NFL team, but they did get Kurt Warner and through divine intervention went all the way to the Super Bowl. Oh, praise the almighty Warner! Then there's former St. Louis Blues forward Lee Stepniak, who had everyone in St. Louis and Toronto's fooled. This guy can actually score. Well, he had 52 points in 07. Aren't you supposed to be playing golf right now? Anyhow, the Cardinals win on Monday 4-2, mainly behind another solid performance by Brad Penny, scattering eight hits throughout seven innings, allowing only two runs in the first, but struck out five for the win. Tuesday night, they lost in a slugfest 9-7, and for the first time this season, they blew a lead. Not just once, but three times. Couple of things. First, this one's for you, Legenius. From now on, I would recommend against putting Mitchell Boggs in relief after pulling Kyle Loesch. Bad things seem to happen. And remember those ex-St. Louis sports figures that revived their careers in Phoenix? Add Dan Heron to that list. Heron was a part of that epic trade that sent him to the Oakland Athletics for Mark Mulder, which turned out pretty awesome for us, didn't it? Well, Heron has pretty much owned us since he's been back in the National League, but Tuesday night, we finally got to him. He gives up seven runs on nine hits, but he does strike out eight. But even worse, he goes four for four at the plate, driving in a run and basically causing us to lose the game. And last night, we came back and beat them nine to four. Chris Carpenter was on the mound and went seven innings once again. But thanks to Trevor Miller wild pitch, Carp gets a no decision. And of course, things get a little interesting in the top of the second when he gets hit by a pitch, then is out on a double play ball. The bench is cleared, but this isn't hockey, so nothing happens. You might be asking, what was the difference maker in the series? As with every Cardinals win so far, it seems the only way we can score runs is by way of the long ball. Monday night, Matt Holliday goes yard for two runs. Tuesday night, Ryan Ludwig opens the night with a two-run shot in the first inning. Then is part of a back-to-back -back effort, along with Albert Pujols in the third, four runs on Tuesday night. And last night, Colby Rasmus hit a pair, a two-run shot in the first, and a solo shot in the ninth, which proved to be the game winner, while Skip Schumacher hit a three-run shot to put the icing on this one. That's a total of six runs in this game. The reason why I bring this up is that although chicks really do dig the long ball, they're having difficulty manufacturing runs through conventional means. You know, like getting timely hits and grasping the concept of running bases. Yeah, Luddy, I'm talking to you on this one. I guess Mark McGuire has really put his mark on this team. Either homer or strike out frequently. Let's just hope they don't make the other same mistakes that Big Mac did. And speaking of drug sheets, if anyone had Cincinnati Reds pitcher Edison Volquez as the first player to get busted this year, you are absolutely right. He gets suspended 50 games for violating the Major League Baseball performance enhancing drug policy. He claims it was some sort of fertility drug. Now I for one am not surprised. 
As you might remember, he was acquired from the Texas Rangers for another drug addict. Uh, hey, Ronnie, you snort the last line! Okay, back to the cards. We're off today, then on to San Francisco to face the Giants, who have had lost their last four games. But we have some awesome pitching matchups. Jaime Garcia versus two-time Cy Young winner Tim Lincecum tomorrow night, followed by Wayno versus Zito on Saturday. And if you're looking for something to fill the void tonight, the NFL Draft gets underway. You know, if anyone out there can totally screw this one up, it's definitely the Rams. Till next time, let me know what you think. Submit your comments, questions, or responses below in the comment box. Subscribe on YouTube, follow me on Twitter, and friend me on Facebook if you can find me. Have a great weekend. You're always a winner at Hot Shots. Go Cards!